Castle Crushers is a bit like going to a theme park on your own. Sure, you can walk around and take in the sights and sounds and the rides are still fun enough, but you just know if you had a few of your mates with you, the experience would be 10 times better. That's the feeling I got playing Castle Crushers alone. Sure, the mechanics are the same, you're mostly scrolling from left to right like old school arcade games such as The Simpsons or Turtles Arcade, mashing the Y and X buttons to unleash a flurry of attacks on the weird creatures that inhabit the land. But it can feel pretty lonely. I chucked a Joy-Con at my wife and roped her in for some co-op and the experience was immeasurably better. So is this game worth getting if you plan to play solo? Let's find out in my review of Castle Crushers on the Nintendo Switch. This Nintendo Switch version of the game is a port of the 2015 remaster which itself took the 2008 original and gave it a nice shiny upgrade for modern consoles such as up in the resolution and moving from 30 to 60 frames a second both features are retained on the Switch. As I mentioned earlier, this is a side-scrolling beat-em-up with a paper-thin story where you choose from an eventual selection of around 20 knights and head off to rescue the kingdom's mystical gem and four princesses which have been stolen by the Dark Wizard. All the characters on screen have a beautiful and colourful hand-drawn style but are very much flat 2D. The fact that you can move in all directions around the space though sees the first issue of the game arise as lining up attacks can be quite frustrating at times as you almost have to be aligned in a pixel perfect fashion to land your blows. This is of particular annoyance during boss fights where the larger character models move around a lot more and charge at you. The game features an overworld map which reminded me of Super Mario games of old and you travel from location to location unlocking new areas as you clear them of enemies. Shops and special challenge areas will also reveal themselves over time on the map. I felt the map could have been a little clearer myself in showing areas you had already completed and which areas were shops. The whole map is displayed in an almost monochrome fashion and I thought it would have been a nice touch to have the map introduce some colour into the areas that you had cleared. Controls are nice and tight when playing thanks to that 60 frames a second display and even when the action gets super hectic with lots of enemies and effects on the screen the frame rate remains pretty rock solid. As you progress through the game, you gain XP to level up your character, which will unlock new moves and also, after you die, will allow you to allocate points to your character in one of four areas. The weapons, abilities and animal familiars you pick up on your travels remain persistent, giving this almost a roguelike feel because after you die, you can start again from any level and grind some XP to upgrade your characters. The main problem I had with the game is that inherent feeling of loneliness, which I hope will be solved once the game launches due to the online component, allowing for you and up to three other players, either randoms or friends, to tackle the game together. This brings us to a persistent problem with the Switch, and that is the lack of voice support. Even playing this online in the few games I did manage to find, you still feel like you're just fighting alone. I would imagine jumping on Xbox Live on the 360 back in the day and using a headset to chat with other players was a lot of fun and ultimately the most enjoyment I've had with the Switch version of Castle Crashers was at EGX playing the game alongside three other players. Even though I'd never met them before, it didn't take long before we were all laughing and trying to outdo each other before the session culminated in a surprise free-for-all fight to win the hand of the princess. So, in summary, Castle Crashers finds itself in an unfortunate spot on the Nintendo Switch. It's a game best enjoyed alongside others, but the system's lack of decent online features will mean Switch owners won't get the best out of it in that way. Where the Switch can come into its own for the game is in Couch Co-op, with the ability to slide a couple of Joy-Cons into your buddy's hands for a session is as great as ever, as long as you have people to play with. Technically, the game is sound with great visuals and performance and some decent, albeit repetitive, music at times. As a solo player though, you may find the gameplay a tad repetitive and soulless. I also found a pretty major bug in one of the mini-games called Back Off Barbarian, which sees you play an almost board game style mini-game where you hop around squares to avoid enemies by pressing one of the face buttons. Unfortunately, the game controls still reference the colours of the Xbox buttons to move around and it's totally confusing to the point of being unplayable on the Switch. I'm not sure how this can be fixed easily, as whilst they could reference the Switch button layout, this will change when you play the game with horizontal Joy-Cons. This is an optional minigame bonus though, so it can easily be ignored. The final challenge the game faces right now is releasing in an incredibly busy time for some amazing games coming out, 
And if you are going to play this alone, I would maybe consider if you'll get your money's worth here or it's better spent elsewhere. Primarily as a solo player, I'm going to be giving Castle Crashers on the Nintendo Switch a 7.5 out of 10. Though I must stress, if you have buddies, either locally or maybe a regular Discord group that you can play with online with voice chat, then easily add at least another point to this score as it's far more fun to play alongside others. Thank you so much for watching this review. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and found it useful. And I will see you all on the next one. Bye for now.